like to do today is to look at an example of a group, a particular kind of group. So let's go back and review what we mean by a group. And if you recall, what we needed was a set of elements. Let's call it some set S, and the elements would be A, comma B, comma C. And then we would have some operation uh, defined over this set, all right? Such that certain properties held true. And if you remember what the properties of a group were, we insisted that it be a closed set. Is that right with respect to that operation of, let me call this circle plus? And then also we would like to have a property of associativity, A-S-S-O-C-I-A, T-I-V-I, P-I-T-Y, all right? And then also we would like to have what kind of an element, Doug? Um, an inverse. An inverse, but before we needed, before we had an inverse element, we needed a, an, identity. an identity element, all right? We needed an identity element, and then in fact, we then would like to have inverse elements over that set, okay? And we have these four properties then over some set S of elements with one operation. And when we have this kind of a set of elements with that operation and these four properties, then we call that set, a, uh, that axiomatic system, a group. Well, what I'd like to do today is to look at a particular example of a, uh, of a set of elements. And then in fact, we would like to ask ourselves the question, does this set, uh, uh, satisfy all of these properties of a group. And let's look at this model that I've constructed here. And what we have is an equilateral triangle. Let's call, associated with this point, this vertex, let's say the letter A and B and C. Now let's think of this as our starting position, so to speak. And then we have here a line, let's call that line N. And here is a line, let's call it line S. And here is a line, let's call it line P. Now notice that we have this figure in such a way so that when we turn it over, we also have the same letters in the same place so that our vertex points are what we are talking about, okay? Now, what I'd like to do is to define a number of, of uh, what we might think of as operations, all right? For example, uh, in terms of our elements. For example, if we then were to start in the starting position and rotate this figure in a counterclockwise direction, 120 degrees, let's call that some element R sub 1, all right? So let's come over here and make some definitions. I would like to then talk about a set of elements in which uh, I, I would like to say what these elements are. First of all, let's include some element R sub 1, in which I now will define R sub 1 as a counterclockwise rotation, all right, of, uh, of 120 degrees. And now let's come back here to our model. If we then were to start from our starting position in this fashion and then rotate this many degrees, what then, uh, how many degrees have we rotated? This would be in the counterclockwise direction, Steve, 240. So let's then call that element R sub two, which would be a counterclockwise rotation of 240 degrees, okay? Now, let's then come back here to our starting position as we have it right here. And let's think of a, of a reflection about the line N, all right? And the fact that I, we started from this position here, notice now that B stays in the lower right-hand corner. If we then were to reflect it about the line N, I think you would agree that we would have our triangle in that position. Is that right? So let's then call that F sub 1 using a notational device of F sub 1 in which we will call this a reflection, a reflection about the line N, all right? Now, let's then come back to our figure and look at the starting position as we have it here. And now let's create a reflection about the line S. And if we were to do so, I think you would agree that we would have our picture in this position right here, is that right? So let's then call that one F sub two. Notice the way in which we are defining these about the line S. And then let me call F sub three, that reflection about the line what? Mm -hmm. About the line T. And in fact, what I'd like to do is to define that element E. I'll call it E in which there is no change. And what do you think we would like to think of it? This is going to be what element in our set? This is our identity element, okay? In which we are not going to create any change. In fact, you may also think of it as a rotation, say, of 360 degrees but I would rather think of it as simply as an old change. Well, let's then look at our elements. We have R sub one, comma, R sub two, comma, F sub one, F sub two, 
and f sub 3 are our elements in our set, and also the element e. All right? Now, what we'd like to do is to define an operation. So let's then come back to our starting position as we have it here. And for example, if we were to have a rotation of r sub 1, it would be in this position. And then let's follow that by a rotation, let's say, of r sub 2. And to follow it by a rotation of r sub 2, then, would be to continue around here 240 degrees. Is that right? And you end up in this position right here. Does everyone agree with that? All right. So that, let's then think of r sub 1 followed by, and let me use this symbol, this circle plus symbol, to mean is followed by r sub 2. And in this case, r sub 1 plus, if I may use that notation, r sub 1 plus r sub 2 then is equal to, Don, e is equal to e. So let me then define what we mean by circle plus, and I'll simply say is followed by, okay? Is followed by, and that's what we mean by this operation of circle plus. Well, let's perhaps perform one or two other operations. Suppose we were to start out with r sub 1 and follow it by, say, f sub 1, and let's see what happens. Well, r sub 1 now, coming back to our starting position in this, in this fashion, and then r sub 1 then puts us here, and now we're going to reflect it about n. Isn't that right? That's our f sub 1. And when we reflect it about n, we end up in this position. Now, thinking in terms of the initial position and looking at where we are right now, can anybody see what element we have at this stage? Tom? This is equal to, Tom says, uh, what is it? Brenda? F sub 2. Now, let's see. F sub 2 then is a rotation about the line f. Is that right? And I think, can everyone agree with that? Can everyone see that if we were to start this is our starting position. If you were to flip about f sub 2, indeed, that's exactly where we are at this point. Everyone agree with that? So therefore, r sub 1 circle, f sub 1 then is equal to what number, what element? F, f sub 2. OK? Well, does everyone see how we have defined this operation? Now, we can continue here and look at any number of examples. But I think after a point, what you would like to say is that I think I can make a table. A table, just as in addition, for example, we make an addition table. Or in multiplication, we have a multiplication table. So it is here, with respect to these six elements, let's try to construct a table. And in fact, that's exactly what I have done here. And notice now, the elements that we have down the left column here, we would think of this as our first operation or our first rotation or reflection, whichever we're going to perform. And then followed by, then we would perform the second operation on that, uh, uh, on, our, on our little figure, all right? For example, f sub 1 followed by f sub 3 should be r sub 1. And shall we check that one, for example? Let's check f sub 1 followed by f sub 3. Coming back here, f sub 1 followed by f sub 3. And let's see what we get. Well, again, let's go to our starting position right here. Now, f sub 1 is a flip about the n line. Is that right? The line n. And then f sub 3 is a flip about the line t. And we end up in this position. And now, if you were to look at that, what is it in relation to the starting position? And Richard? r sub 1. That then it would be equal to r sub 1. Does everyone see that? OK. This then is equal to r sub 1. And sure enough, I think you'll agree with me that our table, at least in that one instance, is certainly accurate. Well, I think the crucial question that we would like to ask is what? Does this set S, as we have defined it with these six elements and that one operation, does it form a group? Does it form a group? Well, let's ask that question and come over here. And uh, let's ask, is S a group? Well, in order to show that it's a group, we have to show that those four properties are, are uh, true. Is the set closed? Yeah. And uh, the mere fact that we have a table exhibited here in which we have our six elements followed by our six elements in which we have inside of our table all of the elements in that set, I think you will agree that our set is closed. Now, it, the question is, is our set associative? Well, in order to show associativity, I think you're going to have 
lots and lots of examples to, to show indeed would be true. It's still a finite number of, uh, of examples, but I think that it would be a considerable number. So let's just pick out one or two cases, perhaps just one, and see how it would proceed. For example, suppose we were to take r sub 1 and follow it by, say, O f sub 2, and then follow that by, say, uh, what would you like to follow it by? Anyone? Let's pick out any element. And uh, Richard? R sub 2. Let's pick out r sub 2. The question is, is this equal to r sub 1 followed by f sub 2 followed by r sub 2? Is that right? That's what we need to answer. Well, let's then look at our table rather than using our little uh, our little model, r sub 1 followed by f sub 2. So here's r sub 1 followed by f sub 2 is f sub 3. Is that right? So this then is f sub 3 is followed by r sub 2. Let's work first with the left-hand side and see where it leads. Here we have f sub 3 is followed by r sub 2 is what number or what element? That's f sub 1. So on the left-hand side, we have f sub 1. And the question is, what do we end up with on the right-hand side? Well, there's r sub 1 is followed by, now remember here we have a binary operation. We can perform is followed by with two elements. And now let's look at f sub 2 is followed by r sub 2, coming back here to our table. f sub 2 is followed by r sub 2 is what element? That three. is f sub 3. And now we have f sub 3, and the question is, uh, on the right-hand side, looking at our table again, r sub 1 is followed by f sub 3 gives us what element? F, f sub, sub one. 1 on the right-hand side, and lo and behold, in this particular case, they are equal. Well, I think we could run through a half a dozen examples, or even 12 examples, and after a while, I think you will be convinced that you have associativity. Let's let it go at this and simply uh, say that we do have associativity, all right? Now then the next question is, is there an identity element? And because of the nature in which we constructed our, uh, our model here, what do you think the identity element is? And Bill? E. It's the, uh, the element E, all right? And now once we have that identity element, the question is, does each element have an inverse? Well, let's start out with, say, the element E. Let me use the notation E inverse. I think we've used this once before. What do you think the inverse of E is? E. And I think you'll agree that it's E itself. Well, let's then look at R sub 1 and look for its inverse. And I think you can easily see this from the table. R sub 1 followed by what element is E? And I think you then can read it right here, and it would then be what? R sub 2. Well, R sub 2 inverse then, reading our table. R sub 2 followed by what element is E? And it must be r sub 1. And lo and behold, r sub 1 and r sub 2 are inverses of each other. Well, let's then come over here. Let's look at f sub 1 inverse is equal to what element? f sub 1 followed by what element is e? And it is itself. Aha, there's a case where we have its own inverse. And then f sub 2 inverse is going to be equal to f sub 2. By golly, there is its own inverse. And f sub 3 inverse is going to be equal to f, f sub 3. So I think just thinking of our model, certainly looking at any one of these, uh, suppose, for example, we were to consider f sub 3. That's a reflection about the line t. And then if you were to follow that by another reflection about the line t, uh, certainly you should get back to where you started from. And that's indeed your identity element e. Well, is s a group? And I think you would say that yes, it is. And in fact, we give this group a special name, and that's the name of this section in this extra for experts. We refer to this as the group of symmetries, all right? The group of symmetries, because we are looking at all of these, uh, at all these symmetric properties with respect to these elements. Well, let's come back here to our table and notice that if we were to consider the elements E, R sub 1, and R sub 2, and then also is followed by E, R sub 1, and R sub 2. Let's just look at this much of our table. Notice that in this little table that we have here, consisting of three elements, and the same operation of circle plus is followed by, the question is, is that little set of elements a group? And I think from what we have said thus far, and what you would have realized and appreciate, certainly it is closed, is that right? 
I think by going through the mere fact that the entire table is associative, I think then you would agree that this part of the table would certainly be associative. It has an identity element of E in there, and in fact we do have inverses which we have just shown. Therefore, what do you think this little table would, would be? That little set of elements would itself be a, a group. And let's then indicate that, and we refer to this as a subgroup. Because we have within the set S, some set of elements, let's call it S prime, in which we have the elements E, R sub 1, and R sub 2, and the same operation, a circle plus, in which those four properties are true. Because all of that is true, and because S prime is a subset of S, therefore we refer to S prime and this, this little system as a subgroup, okay? And I think that that's a worthwhile notion for us to keep in mind. Well, there's, there are one or two other ideas that I think we can look at. For example, suppose I were to take the element R sub 1. Well, certainly R sub 1 is equal to itself. Let me then take R sub 1 and follow it by R sub 1 again. And without even looking at our table, R sub 1 followed by R sub 1 is equal to what? R sub 2. <coughs> And now let's then take R sub 1 followed by R sub 1 and follow it by R sub 1 again. And what then do we have in this case? This then is equal to E. You're right back to where you started from, aren't you? This then is equal to E. Now notice in our little subgroup of elements as we have here with this one operation, R sub 1 uh, generated, if I may use that word, every element in our set. Okay? And in fact, we refer to this R sub 1 as a generator. And we use that word generator to indicate that R sub 1 generates every element in that set. Okay? And notice that we're talking about the little subgroup rather than the group S itself. Well, let's see what other uh, properties that we may have. And uh, let's see now. Can we see anything else here which is going to be a nice pattern that we can look at? Can anyone think of any other patterns, Bill? The subgroup's going to be commutative, I think. The subgroup is going to be commutative. Yeah. Well, in fact, remember now, we didn't have commutativity as one of our properties of a subgroup, and when we had commutativity, we called it a special name, a, a special group, and we referred to that simply as a commutative, or, in fact, there was another name uh, named after a man, and it's called an abelian group, if it is commutative. Now let's look here at our table, and I think the mere fact, if you were to look at this diagonal, and if you look at symmetry across that diagonal, I think you see that, in fact, the elements are symmetric with respect to that diagonal. Does everybody see what I mean? And therefore, the fact that you do have that symmetry indicates that it is what? Mm. It is commutative. So certainly this little subgroup is a commutative group. Very good. Well. Let's see, I think that's probably all that we need to say about these elements and uh, this group of symmetries and this subgroup. So let me give you your homework assignment for next time. This will be...